Thank you all for coming for the BAFTA original music session. We have the nominees who have been nominated for Sicario and The Revenant, Johan Johansson and Alva Nota, Johan. Can you say a little bit about how exactly it arrived to you? The first fine cut was, was edited without music. There was no temp. Uh, and uh, so I received uh, basically a long rough cut of the film. We had talked a little bit about mood. Danny wanted music that was uh, physical, that, that had, had a kind of a visceral quality and uh, music that you, f that you felt in your body uh, that affected the body as much as the emotions. I decided to use the, uh, the helicopter sounds almost as a part of the music, so, so I very much sort of wrote around, around those sounds, which were obviously going to be dominant in that scene. And, um, um, and I, I tried a couple of different approaches that were all quite different, but this one was really the standout for me, uh, and, and luckily he, he, he agreed. I think this scene really set, uh, set the tone for the rest of the score and, and kind of uh, um, became almost like a blueprint for, for the rest of the, of the music. And when you say the other versions were very different, how different were they? <laughs> they weren't as violent, they weren't as, as sort of uh, as, um, uh, aggressive. They were definitely focusing on another kind of mood, which, uh, which yeah, uh, I mean in hindsight is, <laughs> was completely wrong of course, you know, but fairly soft string kind of um, uh, sort of clouds of, of string harmonies, not unlike uh, the stuff we were doing on Prisoners, for mm. example. And was the work here different or easier because of Prisoners, because you had that relationship? The score is quite different from Prisoners, but definitely we had sort of established a, a, a relationship and a, and a way of working which, which served us well, you know, going into, into Sicario. And now we're, we're on our, our third film uh, together. Then he really challenges me, I think. He really expects me to, to come up with something that he hasn't heard before. That, that, is, that is something that surprises him and that you know, has a strong character and has a individuality to it. And, and, uh, and I, really, I really like that. I really, really enjoy that, uh, that challenge. So he doesn't come to you and say, hey, I like the music in this film. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's more about uh, sort of mood and atmosphere and, and themes and we talked about a, a certain sense of melancholy as well, kind of the, the melancholy of the desert, the melancholy of the border area. As he has said it, the, the, the sadness of Mexico some, some way and, uh, and, and uh, there, are, there are elements of that uh, definitely. The, this, uh, and I think the geography, the landscape is, is, is important as well and the landscape is almost like a character and was very uh, inspiring for me. I'm just going to move to Alvin. What stage did you know you were working on the film? Did Alejandro send you the script? I came very late into the movie. Uichi Sakamoto was basically the main composer. And um, he, he was very sick before. And uh, he rec recovered. And as he recovered, he started accepting one movie, what was a Japanese movie, from a very classic old um, director. And then I think he got very fast afterwards the offer from Inaritu, but he could not refuse. So he had like, in a way, he knew it was a bit kind of clashing. And as well, he still was quite weak. And uh, we met, I think, uh, in summer in Tokyo, and he, he was telling me this, and I thought, like, it's a bit crazy after such a long process of recovery. But he told me already that there's a lot of uh, my music inside, uh, like, like licensed music in a way. I mean, I was kind of in, in the movie, and then in September I got a call and said, uh, OK, can you come tomorrow? <laughs> so, and I said, no, maybe on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> and then basically I, I was arriving, and uh, so much work, and uh, as well as so much energy. And it was an incredible process, because it's the first time I ever did a score. It was great to work uh, with Alejandro, basically, I have to say. It sounds like he had an idea of what he wanted from you. They had very specific ideas. 
and we always had these incredible long meetings. Yeah, I think one meeting we had was like eight hours. Oh, wow. <laughs> what were you talking about for eight hours? Basically, we went the whole movie through, like really from the beginning to the end, talking about exactly what he want. But of course, uh, you can describe music, but you don't know exactly. Maybe somebody says, yeah, I want something very fragile, emotional. You do it and say, I know it's actually too little emotional. I, w I mean more emotional or less. Or so, so I yeah, got like 12 pages in the end, like the only description. And then, of course, when you start working on them, you try to remember what you talked about. It's more rather you're defining something like a feeling, right? Mm. And I think that part worked very well because we've been thinking about the same thing. And then uh, from this point on, it became very easy in a way. For me, this dream scene is basically where he has this kind of surrealistic moments. But these scenes became kind of uh, very important because everybody who reads about the movie knows how the story will end. <laughs> it's quite linear in a way. So for me, the church scene specifically and as well uh, the other dreams became quite uh, more kind of meta metaphoric level. And of course, uh, the, the church scene was an important scene for me because it, it's basically where, where they both meet again, he, he, he and his son, and it's quite an emotional scene. Uh, in the beginning, there, there was no music in, in, this, in that scene, and, uh, and I always wanted to mark them, that, you see, that you're realizing you're in a different state. So I tried to create a kind of a recon recognizable little iconic sounds. I used uh, some of the recording. Uh, Widgie was recording earlier. Some muted piano notes was what, what he was improvising on the piano. And then I, I took them and built from that part very detailed, and very small, let's say, un almost unrecognizable sounds. A lot of the scenes where you think there's no music, <laughs> there is actually a lot of music. Mm. Because the way we composed sometimes was very uh, fractured or very detailed or very, let's say, they would not work as a, as a, as a single piece alone without a movie. But it's been very spark sometimes and very gentle, of course. Yeah. And how much time were you given to write your scores? Writing was, was probably from like October until uh, around this time, really. We recorded, uh, I think, early February and um, yeah, and mixed uh, end, of, end of February. But I'd read the script many months before and uh, went to the set uh, in New Mexico where, where they were shooting. And so it was brewing in the, in the subconscious for, for, a, for a while before that. And how long were you given from the start? Uh, because they flew me into LA, I was basically working like two, seven weeks in a row. And then I had to say, yeah, I think we're done. Mm. <laughs> we can leave now. And then a few cues came and I went back to Berlin. Thank you. Thank you both for coming. It was a great pleasure to have you. <laughs> I was very straight up about the fact that, that no one from within their organization could have creative approval because that's no way for filmmakers to be able to make a film like this. I was just very straight up and I actually think people aren't used to people being honest and being straight up in our business and actually I think it works. And what was their opinion when they saw the fi finished product? Both Marlon's family and the estate are, you know, absolutely delighted with the film.